Yep. <coughs> Denied. Every time. Raise your right hand to be sworn in, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Come have a seat here, Mr. Troyer. Once you do, you'll see there's glass cups, they're not glasses, and water. Thirsty. There are microphones. If you have a pretty good projection, you shouldn't need to lean in too much. I'll let you know if you do. A couple of more instructions in case you haven't testified before. It's not a conversation. It's a question and answer. So you have to listen to the question and answer the question that you're asked. Do you understand that? Yes. You also have to let the question be completed before you begin your answer, even if you think you know what you're being asked. So you have to let them completely finish asking, take a beat, and then answer. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I also need you to answer out loud in words, so head shakes and ah ahams make for a poor record. Do you understand that? Thank you so much. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Ball. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's Mr. Okay. Farah. It's okay. There's so many people. I'm. So, I knew that. I knew that, I, and I just. I just want. I didn't want to check my notes again. But I should have. I'm so sorry. I, my apologies, Mr. Farah. Mr. Farah, would you introduce yourself to the jury, please? My name is Owen Troyer. I work for InfoWars. I'm 33 years old. When you say you work for InfoWars, your actual employer is Free Speech Systems LLC, correct? Correct. So we, we're going to kind of use InfoWars as slang because it's InfoWars.com and that's sort of the, the name out in the community. But just to be clear, the, the broadcasts that go up, uh, the one that you did today or yesterday, those are Free Speech System LLC's broadcasts, correct? Yes. You work for InfoWars or Free Speech Systems. I'm just going to call it InfoWars. Can we, can we make that agreement? Yes. And know that we're, we really mean free speech, okay? Yes. You've worked for them since 2016, correct? Correct. What is your current title? Show host and reporter. Okay. Show host means you're on the air, right? Correct. All right. We're going to get to that in a minute. Um, I hate to ask you this in a public forum, but I, I need to. Can you tell us what your salary is? Um, I don't know the exact number, but I believe it's about 120000 a year before taxes. Miss um, Karpova just testified there was around 50 to 80 employees at uh, Free Speech Systems or InfoWars, correct? Um, I don't know the exact number, but I would say at least 50, yes. Okay, and that's been the same since you've been there since 2016, roughly? Yes. All right. Uh, Alex Jones <coughs> is the sole owner of Free Speech Systems LLC, correct? Yes, I believe so, yes. Um, Infowars.com is obviously on the internet, right? Correct. If somebody said that Infowars lost all access to the internet, that would be an incorrect statement. Fair? Yes. Have you ever heard the saying, lawyers that lie should lose? I don't believe I've heard that. I, I didn't either until Tuesday. I thought it was interesting, though. Um, InfoWars is on, it, it, on right now, right? I and mean, we can pull it up and there's there's a video. Somebody's probably on live right now, right? Yes. If you're on our left, welcome to we're going to put it on the um, This is for demonstrative. Okay. He wants to show InfoWars on mute. mute. And you're, this is a direct connection to the internet, I take it? It is. Okay. So this is... I'm going to walk over. This is Infowars.com, the, the, the home page. It's active, it's up, it's live, it has been since, <clears throat> as far as you've worked, long as you've worked for the company, right? I'm sorry, I was distracted looking at the screen. Can you repeat that? Yeah, it's my fault. It has been active and live for as long as you've been working for the company, right? Infowars.com? Yes. Okay. And you create content. If you click on <coughs> band, band video, this is the content that's created and uploaded to band.com every day, correct? Uh, yes, band.video. Band.video. It's hard to see, but if, if, at least if you'll scroll down just a little bit, you can see how long, obviously the names, how long they are, and when they were uploaded. That's good. So I know the jury can't see this, so I'm just going to say it out loud. Up here is 17 minutes and change, uh, uploaded an hour ago. Uh, 13 minutes and some change, uploaded two hours ago. Eight minutes of change uploaded an hour ago, two hours ago, hour ago, so forth. So and you guys make a lot of content every single day, right? Yes. Half since you've been there, right? Yes. There's not been any um, limitation to your ability to make videos and put them on InfoWars.com, correct? Um, 
the videos go to band.video, sometimes we'll write articles that embed the video to infowars.com. Okay. Um, bandvideo.com is owned by Free Speech Systems also, correct? Uh, band.video, I believe, is owned by Free Speech Systems, but I, I, I don't know that. For okay. The fact. Po point is that there's no sort of drop in ability to make content and put it on your website for your viewers to watch. Has it been since 2015 since you started, correct? Or 16? For us to upload content to band.video? Yes, sir. Uh, no, other than tech issues on our end. And then one of the things that are uh, really the only real source of revenue for InfoWars or free speech is, can you go back, Lisa? Is your store, InfoWars store, correct? Yes. Will you click on that? No, we got to prove we're not a robot. <laughs> Put me on the spot, Lisa. <laughs> Robots deciding whether we're robots or not. This is very, you talk pretty fast. If you'll just try to be careful, please. Scroll that just a little bit if you wouldn't miss it. So we see uh, we have a diet force meal. How do you pronounce this middle one? Bodies. Bodies. Um, some toothpaste. Is this the toothpaste that you guys claim cured COVID? Is that a different one? No. That's a different one? Um, I'm not familiar with that claim. You're not familiar with the FDA and state attorneys general saying stop making that claim? Oh, could I see that claim presented in front of me? That's not important. Oh. If you go up to the top a little bit, Melissa, um, there's different things. There's preparedness, media, specials, gear. Um, just different items that InfoWars sells, and that is really their source of revenue, right? Yes. Okay. During the broadcast, sometimes there will be breaks to promote different items, right? Different things that you sell in your store, correct? Yeah, we have breaks where we run commercials that feature our products. Sometimes it's just live, kind of as you're going. Uh, Mr. Jones will just say, also buy this pill or supplement or whatever it may be, right? Sure, that's referred to as a live read. Okay. It, I've heard it said that about a third of the content, the third of the show, is some form of advertisement for supplements or whatever it is you guys sell. Does that seem about right to you? No. You think it's less? Yeah. 25%? Probably less. Okay. I'm in the ballpark. I, I really, I mean, that's, you're getting into math, but if I was... I'd say it's probably maybe 10 to 15% of the most. Okay. Please, well, I think you can take that one down. Um, how long have you been hosting shows live on Infowars? The show that I host is called The War Room. That launched in September mm -hmm. of 2017. I would fill in as a guest host on other Infowars live shows previously to that, but that was not a regular thing. You co-host with Mr. Jones often, correct? Uh, I've been a guest on Alex's show, yes. You would call it a, a guest? Whenever, let's take, for example, Tuesday afternoon, while we were here in court, you and Mr. Jones were live for three hours, right? Um, I, I don't remember the exact amount of time. Aren't your segments three hours? No, the segments are about ten minutes. Okay. You were live for three hours, and that's uploaded to bandvideo.com, right? Which day are we speaking? We're talking about Tuesday, which was the 26th. I took a screenshot of you and Alex on it. I've marked this as plaintiff's exhibit 124. It's not on the exhibit list, Your Honor. Obviously, it's happening Tuesday. Right. Um, <coughs> thank you. Sure. What? 124? Yes, sir. I was trying okay. to get the next one. That's fine. Uh, does this look like a screenshot of you and Alex, uh, mm -hmm. or Mr. Jones, I'm sorry, uh, from Tuesday? Yes. And uh, we're going to move to uh, yeah, it's 124. Yeah, Any objections? No. 
Do you remember the show? Yes. Okay, so for three hours, you were on for three hours. Does that seem right? I don't want to misrepresent it. I think Tuesday I was on for seven hours. Sure. This this show was three hours, and then you did another 30-minute special with just you and Mr. Jones, really, about this trial, right? I don't recall the exact content <laughs> of the discussion. Okay. you remember yesterday having my website up and talking bad about me and my partners? Yesterday? The day before, I guess it was. Uh, again, I don't recall. Like I said, I was on air for seven hours, so there was a lot of discussion. Okay. okay. So this is the studio with uh, the TVs Ms. Carbova talked about and the fancy graphics, right? Yes. Because you guys are a media company. You can do fancy graphics, right? Yes. Oh, and, and then there's links to things you sell. Instahard, that's a pill you guys sell? Uh, it, it, I, I, I'm not too familiar with the product, it's a new one, but I guess it's a pill. Okay. Oh, well, I'm sorry. It is a product, though, that we sell, yeah. yes. Fair enough. Uh, Diet Force, something you sell? Yes. Do you have any idea where that stuff's sourced from? InfoWars Life? The pills. You mean the, the, the actual the inside actual pills. the ingredients? No. Yeah. You don't? No. Do you know if any of the stuff is approved by the FDA by chance? I don't. Do you know if any of it's been tested to see if it's effective or any good at all? Well, we test the product for ourselves. You mean you take it? Yes. And you're still here, so it must be okay? Yeah, it works for me. every day, well, since this trial started on, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and, and even this morning, Alex Jones has been on live broadcast, right? I'm not sure. Which day are you not sure about? Um, yesterday. Uh, Let me show you what I marked as minus. Let me show you what I marked as This is a screenshot from a show that Mr. Jones was on yesterday. Correct? You can see the date, 727? Yes. Uh, we'll move 126 and after. Any objection? Yes, Your Honor. Relevance and also when this show was taped? When this show is taped is not an objection. So relevance. Foundation. Overruled. And uh, 126 is admitted. You put 126 up. Just putting it up to point out that uh, Mr. Jones was on the show yesterday uh, when he went in court. Did you know when he stormed out of court today, he went and was on the show again today? Uh, no, I was not watching. Okay. We could probably pull it up on the band video and see, but if we take my word for it that he was live today. Sure. In fact, he was with Mr. Barnes, who I think I saw in the courtroom. Yeah, Mr. Barnes back there. The, is his former attorney, right? I, I can't see Mr. Barnes. Uh, you maybe he's right behind the camera. <clears throat> I'll have to take your word for it. She's a perfect blockade. Yeah, he's right there. Or he, sorry. Excuse me, don't want this jury. Did you know that one of the first things this jury was told was Mr. Jones won't be at this trial very much because of a medical condition? I'm unaware. Truth is, he's not at the trial much because he's on air selling pills, right? I'm not, I, I'm not sure. That's where he is when he's not here. I mean, we just established that, right? Today? Well, I know you don't know he was here today. Let's talk about Tuesday and Wednesday, okay? Okay. When he wasn't in trial, he was on air saying whatever he's saying and trying to sell pills or, or supplements or whatever products you guys have, correct? I'm trying to recall correctly. I believe Monday, I don't know if he was on air Monday, and I think... Tuesday, he may have had pre-recorded segments that we aired. Um, that's Charano. my best recollection of Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> if the show on Tuesday <coughs> happened in court on Tuesday, it wasn't pre-recorded, right? Uh, okay, yes. Okay. 
you, you, you hosted with them. Yes. Can you put up 124? I mean, Mr. Schroeder, you live this, right? That's you sitting right next to Alex Jones on 124, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You know when you did it. Did you do it Tuesday? Uh, I, I guess that was Tuesday. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's all been a blur when I'm on seven hours a day, and then I'm sitting in the courthouse for seven hours, eight hours. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just kind of a blur. I understand. And I know you've been here for a couple of days, and I apologize for making you wait because I know you have to sit outside. How much content does InfoWars make a day? We have 10 hours of live transmissions every day, and then there might be some other reports as well. Ooh, <coughs> Do you consider yourself a journalist? Sometimes. That's an interesting answer. Can you give me a little bit of an explanation? Sure. When I go to cover a live event at the scene, I've covered sporting events, I've covered, covered weather events, political events. I would consider that journalism when I'm live on the scene doing something. But when I'm hosting a talk show, not necessarily a journalist. Okay. What's well, like saying whenever I go home and go to bed, I'm not a lawyer. I'm still a lawyer, right? But do you consider yourself a journalist by trade? Sometimes. Okay. Would you agree with me that it is not right for a journalist to edit video clips to fit an agenda? Yeah, that would be bad. Okay. It is not good practice for a journalist to take an edited video clip not ask any questions about it, not do any fact checking, and air it. Agree with that? Yes. Because when you do that, mistakes are made, right? Yes. And when mistakes are made, people get hurt, right? Sometimes. Sometimes, right? That damage can be serious, right? Sometimes. Life changing, right? Sometimes. Devastating, right? Sometimes. You don't consider yourself a conspiracy theorist, fair? Sometimes. Mr. Shorter, I'm going to hand you a notebook. I just got this deposition report that's going to be better. I'm going to hand you a notebook so it may make things easier. In front of it is your, under tab one, is your deposition that you gave in this case. You recall to give it a deposition? Yes. I'm just going to show you because sometimes people don't know exactly how these pages work. If you look, these, these page numbers, this 14, 16, 15, 17, and the lines. And I'm going to orient you to a couple pages and lines, okay? Sure. Right now, if you go to page 151, did you say line or page? I'm sorry, that's the wrong page anyway. Oh, yeah, page 151, line 14. And I, or you were asked, this is December 2nd, 2021, you were asked, do you think you're a conspiracy theorist? Your answer? No. Okay. That's what you said under oath, December of last year, right? Yes. Are you changing that? Since, have you become a conspiracy theorist in that last uh, seven years? <coughs> no. You're going to stick with no? Yes. That was a little bit difficult. You try this again. Everyone, please remember, put every device off or on silent before you walk in the courtroom. I'm going to ask the question again. Or leave it somewhere else. That's what I do. I'll ask the question again from the start. Do you consider yourself a conspiracy theorist? No. Okay. You do, however, consider CNN a conspiracy theorist, right? Sometimes. If you go to page 164. I'm not going to read the question because it's long, but you can see the answer on 24 25. You say, well, I would say CNN is a conspiracy theorist. How about that? That's what you said, right? Yep. Still agree with that? Yes. Okay. You did a show on June 25th, 2017, where you were the sole host. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. Um, that was a Sunday, correct? Yes. Which is why you were doing it at the time, right? I'm sorry, what? Is that, that's why you were hosting because it was a Sunday? Um, no. 
the Sunday Alex Jones show has been on air for a long time. I was filling in that night. Okay. It airs from 4 to 6 Central Time? Yes. This is the one where you challenged whether or not Neil Heslin ever held his son, Jesse. Right? No. I uh, challenge that the videos presented didn't add up and that Megyn Kelly had done harm to the story being uh, removed from the public consciousness. It just caused it to be brought up again. I'm not going to quibble about you because we're going to watch it. It is the show about Neil Heslin and whether or not he held Jesse in his arms, right? That's what the show's about, or that segment's about. Um, not the whole at show. At least the last right. four minutes, yeah. It was the last four minutes? I believe so, yes. Of the, of the four to six? Yes. Okay. That show was on InfoWars, correct? Yes. So Free Speech Systems is the one that's publishing that, correct? Yes. Before you did that show, you had no idea who Neil Hesley was, right? Correct. You were, I mean, you didn't care if you were talking about that, right? No. Yes, what I just said is correct. You didn't care who you are talking about. Can you rephrase the question or repeat it? Did you care who you were talking about? Yes. Did you care that you were talking about Neil Hesley? <clears throat> yes. Why don't you go to page 110 of your deposition? You know you're under oath here, right? Yes. Okay. You know you were under oath when you gave this deposition, right? Yes. Explain sure. <coughs> Line three through six, I'll read the question. Okay, so you didn't care who you were talking about. What was your answer? I was just covering a story that was given to me. You didn't care who you were talking about. It didn't matter to you, right? No, I didn't say that. Okay. You were handed the story while you were on air live. You ran with it, right? Yes. You did zero to determine if it was accurate, right? Correct. You did no vetting of the story at all, correct? Correct. You did nothing to determine if it was a joke or a parody, right? Correct. There are video clips in it. You didn't watch them, right? Correct. Before you played them. Correct. How many people do you think were watching that day? Millions? Tens of millions? I don't know. How many people do you think were watching that day? About 100,000. You know the reach. You're going to sit there under oath and say a couple hundred thousand? Well, I'm, I'm under oath to tell the truth, and the truth is I don't know. Okay. You don't know. You know it's over a million. You know it's closer to 10 million, right? No, I don't know that. Okay. You didn't check the source, right? You're referring to Zero Hedge? Right. You didn't check the source. You didn't check the author. Well, I mean, I, I saw it said Zero Hedge on it. Okay, that's the website, right? Yes. That's not where it originated from, though, right? Um, well, to me it was. It wasn't the question. It's not where it originated from, right? Well, it was published on Zero Hedge. That's where I saw it. But obviously, I understand the author was, I believe, something called Zero Point Now. Right. You think it's his real name? I doubt it. Right. So somebody called Zero Point Now write something on a website called iBankCoin, which is then picked up by Zero Hedge. You do absolutely nothing to determine if any words in this have any accuracy at all, and you play it on air and make comments about it, right? Yes. Let's play 23. PBX 23. So folks, now, here's another story. You know, I don't even know if Alex knows about this, to be honest with you. Alex, if you're listening and you want to, uh, or if you just want to know what's going on, Zero Hedge has just published a story Megyn Kelly fails to fact check Sandy Hook's Sandy Hook father's contradictory claim in Alex Jones' hit piece. Now again, this this broke 
I think it broke today. I don't know what time. But featured in Megyn Kelly's expose, Neil Heslin, a father of one of the victims, during the interview described what happened the day of the shooting and basically what he said, the statement he made, fact checkers on this have said cannot be accurate. He's claiming that he held his son and saw the bullet hole in his head. That is his claim. Now, according to a timeline of events and a coroner's testimony, that is not possible. And so one must look at Megyn Kelly and say, Megyn, I think it's time for you to explain this contradiction in the narrative. Because this is only going to fuel the conspiracy theory that you're trying to put out, in fact. So, and here's the thing, too. You would remember, let me see how long these clips are. You would remember if you held your dead kid in, in your hands with a bullet hole. That's not something that you would just misspeak on. So let's roll the clip first. Neil Heslin telling Megyn Kelly of his experience with his, with, uh, with his kid. At Sandy Hook Elementary School, one of the darkest chapters in American history was a hoax. I washed my son. I buried my son. I held my son with a bullet hole through his head. Neil Heslin's son Jesse, just six years old, was murdered, along with 19 of his classmates and six adults, on December 14th, 2012, in Newtown, Connecticut. Yeah, I dropped him off at 9.04. That's when we dropped him off at school with his book bag. Um, hours later, I was picking him up in a body bag. So making a pretty extreme cl claim that would be a very thing vivid in your memory, holding his dead child. Now here is an account from the coroner that does not cooperate with that narrative. Uh, we did not bring the bodies and the family's sense of contact. We took uh, pictures of them, um, of, of their facial features. You have, uh, uh, it's, it's easier on the families when you do that. Uh, a time and a place for a plus and personal in the grieving process. But to accomplish this, uh, we felt it would be best uh, to do it this way. And uh, you can sort of, uh, you can control the situation uh, depending on your photographer. And I have very good photographers. Uh, but uh, it's got to be hard not to have been able to actually see her. Well, at first I thought that, and I had questioned maybe wanting to see her. Okay, so just another question that people are now going to be asking about Sandy Hook. The conspiracy theorists on the internet out there that have a lot of questions that are yet to get answered. I mean, you can say whatever you want about the event, that's just a fact. So there's another one. Will there be a clarification from Heslin or Megyn Kelly? I wouldn't hold your breath. <laughs> so now they're fueling the conspiracy theory claims. Unbelievable. We'll be right back with more. After four years of research, the next big game changer has arrived. Z-Shield Toxic Metal and Chemical Defense Support. It's made in the USA. It's filled with known compounds from nature that are absolutely associated with detoxifying the body, and it supports the info war. It is a classical 360 win. We're changing the world. Now it's time to change our bodies with ZShield at InfoWarsLife.com. So right after you called Neil Heslin a liar, played a commercial to, to sell Z-Force, Z-Shield. Can you back that up, Lisa? Objection, CPRC. 4111. The same? Yeah. Okay. Overruled. May I have a running objection? Yes. Stop it. Correct? Uh, no. Because you don't think you called Dale Hessen a liar, right? I didn't. Right after you ran that piece, and we'll get to that part. Right after we ran that piece, you ran that piece, you ran a commercial trying to sell Z-Shield 
toxic metal and chemical defense support, right? I didn't run that. That was probably pre-programmed into our commercial system. Free speech systems, right after they had you say the things that you said about Neil Heslin, right after that, they ran a commercial for a product that they sell on their website called Z-Shield, right? Well, yes. When we go to a break, we run commercials. Right. Because InfoWars is actually an infomercial, right? No. I want to look at the source. Can you put up PX20, which is in evidence? This is the article. And if it's useful to you, let's have um, tab four in your notebook there. Well, Lisa, can you, can you blow up where it says, actually, yeah, can you blow up where it says uh, content originally? Content originally published at ibankcoin.com. You see that? Which uh, which page is this? It's uh, also on your screen. Apple, yes, it's true. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It may be easier that way. I see that, yes. Okay. That is not a reliable source. You and I can agree on that, right? Uh, yes. Okay. The author we've talked about before, and the release it's up on the top, By zero point now, um, you have no idea who that is, right? No. You have no idea if they're a reliable source or not, right? No. You've never heard of that person before, or at least so, no. Pseudo name or whatever it may be, right? You definitely never run a story by zero point now before, correct? I don't believe so. This was republished, as you said, by a website called Zero Hedge, right? Yes. Also, not a reliable source. Correct? Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. Right? Perhaps. So let me ask you this. If I have if you get something from a source and you're and you look and say, you know, this source sometimes is reliable, sometimes they're way out there and unreliable. Isn't it incumbent on you to check it and do some sort of vetting before you put it on here? Yes, I could have done a better job. You could have done a job. Right? You did nothing. You could have done something. Right? Well, I was live on air at the time, so it was given to me and I covered it. Is it an excuse to say I didn't have time? Is, is that an excuse to defamation, to defaming Mr. Heslin? Is that an excuse to you? I just didn't have time? Can you repeat or rephrase the question? Please? Is it an excuse to say I didn't have time? Is that a proper excuse to go defame somebody? No. Is it a proper excuse to devastate them? I just didn't have time. I don't agree that that's what happened. Which part? That he was devastated? That I had, that even if I had the time, then I wouldn't have run the story. So it would never run. It comes to me, I'm on air. Time is of the essence, is what you're saying. Got to get that new story going now, right? Got to get to the end to sell the metal ions, right? Whether I covered this story or not, that commercial was going to run. Well, the difference is whether you covered it or not is if we're sitting here today. That's the difference, right? Can you repeat the question? The difference is it doesn't destroy these people if you don't run the story, right? I don't know. I think we can agree on some points that, you, that, that we agree on before you ran the story. You had one never heard of Mr. Heslin. Correct? Yes. It's not going to work this time. You never heard of Mr. Heslin? Correct? Correct. You did nothing to fact check the accuracy of this report or story? Correct? Correct. You didn't watch the, the video clips, right? Not prior to the second. Did InfoWars cut those clips? I do not know. So editors InfoWars, as far as you know, could have been the one who cut those clips. You know they were cut, right? It's my understanding that they were cut by whoever published the story. You know they were cut. 
right? We well, had yeah, video clips. Yeah, you know this, the the interview. We're going to get to it with with Dr. Carver, the medical examiner. That's 15 and a half minutes long, right? I, I don't know that. You know, it's a lot longer than what was showed on that story, right? Yes. Okay. You know the um, the, the family, the, the McDonald family, that lost their daughter Grace. You understand that? Okay. You believe that? Do I believe what? That they lost their daughter Grace. Yes. Okay. You know that that was a long interview with Anderson Cooper, right? Again, I was not familiar with the interview prior. Do you, sitting on this seat right now, know that that interview with um, Anderson Cooper was significantly longer than what was played? I will take your word for it. Do you know that her answer, Ms. McDonald's answer, was actually cut off and get answer? There's a lot more to that answer that explains what she's saying. No. Did on. you know that what she's saying is she didn't want to open the casket at the funeral home to bring all the toys that she brought for Grace to put them in there because she wanted to remember the way she looked when she went to school that day. You know that? No, I'm not aware. Because you didn't do anything to find out, right? Yes. You may not have even actually read the article before you put it up, right? Started just kind of reading as you're going. I don't recall for sure, but yeah, could be the case. You've never heard of I Bank Point, right? Yes. And you never heard of the author Zero Point Now, correct? Yes. Despite that, you had no problem putting that on the air, right? Yes. You have testified, I think you just tried to say it again earlier, you don't believe you called Neil Hessen a liar, right? Yes. I want to play a couple of clips out of this. I want to, let's be clear. That piece and what you say in it is, is Neil Heslin did not hold his son, right? I don't believe I said that. That's what the message is. Let's take the full message, whether it comes from the article, the clips, or you. The message is Neil Heslin never held Jesse, right? No. What's the message? The message is that the intention of Megyn Kelly to bury these conspiracy theorists failed miserably, and it's going to make it worse. So you're... We know this, right? This is this we can agree on. Alex Jones was angry at Megyn Kelly for that piece that ran, right? On him. I don't know. I, I'm sure. It, I'm sure that Alex Jones was unhappy that he was lied to by Megyn Kelly. He was. He was pissed. I mean, yeah, he was lied to, right? So he wanted to get retaliation to Megyn Kelly, right? No. If he had to stomp on Neil Heslin on the way to do it, so be it, right? That's what happened. No. What you had to try to say, because what you're, what you're not saying is that Neil Heslin lost his son and he just didn't hold him, that that's a lie. What you're saying is he's a crisis actor who forgot his lines. That's never, what you're saying. I never said that. That's the message. No, it's not. Because to, to say it's a hoax, to say it's a hoax, you have to say all these people are actors. And when you find a glitch in the matrix, when somebody says something just a little bit wrong that you think is out of character, out of line, they forgot their lines, that's the attack. That he's an actor, right? No, I never said he was an actor. I never said it was a hoax. Hey, video clip one, please. He's claiming that he held his son and saw the bullet hole in his head. That is his claim. Okay, so making a pretty extreme cl claim that would be a very thing vivid in your memory, holding his dead child. So those are two parts that are spliced together, but the point is both times you say he's claiming, right? Yes. Right, so that's like a, that, you're saying it, maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. He's, he's, that's his claim. Not that it happened. He's claiming it happened, right? Well, yeah, that's what he claimed. I'm not doubting that. I never said that so, he was a liar. To be clear, I, I just want to make sure I understand this perfectly. When you three times say he's claiming it, and then show evidence that you say refutes it, you're saying you're not doubting it. I didn't show evidence that refuted his claim. I showed evidence that was presented to me that says this doesn't add up. You don't think an edited clip of the coroner saying uh, the parents were never united with the kids, and a clip of a mom saying I didn't get to see the child, is evidence to refute his claims that he held Jesse. That's what your testimony is. Under oath to these 14 folks, 16 folks. Can you repeat the question? I'll 
truck. You're saying that playing the coroner's clip, saying that the parents and the children are never united, and also playing a mother's interview where she said she did not get to see her daughter Grace, right after you say he claims to help Jesse, you don't say that that's evidence that he's not being truthful? No. And what was in my head that day was never that. The only thing that was in my head that day was questioning Megan Kelly because she lied to Alex about what she was doing there. And then here, the conspiracy theory that she was trying to bury is rearing its ugly head again. I could have done a much better job that day. Absolutely. I probably should have known more about those videos and that story before I ran it. But I never called Mr. Heslin a liar. I never said Sandy Hook didn't happen. I never said that they were crisis actors. Next response to the same. You just said it was you just said it was to get back at Megan Kelly because she lied to Alex Jones. That's what you just said, right? Okay. That's what this was about. It was to get back at Megan Kelly, and if you stomp on some people on the way, who cares? You didn't even know who he was, right? I wasn't trying to stomp on anybody. <coughs> it's not a matter of what you're trying to do. It's the result that matters, right? Well, when do we begin? What's the result of what? Play the clip video, Kyle video too, please. So, and here's the thing too. You would remember, let me see how long these clips are. You would remember if you held your dead kid in, in your hands with a bullet hole. That's not something that you would just misspeak on. You say he misspoke. No, I said you wouldn't misspeak. Okay. So what you're saying is, is Neil Hessel was telling the truth the whole time. That, that's your position? That, that's, what this, that's what this whole piece from start to finish, the message anybody should get is that Neil Heston is telling the truth. I am taking a neutral approach to this, and I'm simply saying that is a serious memory in your head that you would not forget. And then you challenge that it ever happened. Because you say the parents weren't allowed to see their kids, right? You put on evidence that the parents weren't allowed to see the kids, right? I played a clip of the coroner saying that the kids weren't released or that the bodies weren't released, so just as easily you can infer that the coroner was lying. And then you played the family, a grieving mother, who said that she wanted to see her child and decided not to, right? Yes, that clip follows. And you cut it off whenever you could explain what it was actually talking about, right? Uh, I did not edit that clip. Somebody did, you played it. Uh, yes. You don't know who edited it, right? I mean, no. could have been somebody free speech, could have been somebody else. I don't know. Okay. A couple more clips I want to play. Can you go to the full one and just stop it at 43 seconds? Can, can you just tell me which exhibit? We're sure. Playing? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's the same. <coughs> just the same 20. Um, 23. 23. Okay. 23. That's in Megyn Kelly's expose. <coughs> Two things I want to point out. You see this three shares? Yes. All right, this isn't an article that's sort of breaking the internet, right? Uh, I guess not. All right. You see the time it was published, 3.35 p.m.? <coughs> yes. That was the same day, right? Yes. Uh, that's probably Eastern time, wouldn't you think? I don't know. Okay, let's call it 335 Central, make it more favorable. You said you published this around 555, right? Uh, I believe so. So, InfoWars, somebody, your folks in the back, I don't know what you call them, writers or editors or whatever it may be, had hours to try to fact check this before they handed it to you, right? Not necessarily. They might not have seen it until 535. Okay, and they had 20 minutes. They might not have seen it until 555. All right, you think they just printed it hot off the presses and threw it to you? Most likely, yes. Okay. We saw with this Karpova earlier today, in fact, 
uh, the defense played a clip of Alex Jones saying that he gives his sincere condolences to the family. Are you familiar with that clip? I have heard Alex Jones apologize and, and basically correct himself many times. Let, yes. Let's be clear, that was not an apology. An apology is, I'm sorry for what I did. Sincere condolences is not an apology. It's something, but it's not an apology, right? If I said, I'm sorry for your loss, I'm not apologizing to you. Fair? That sounds like an apology to me. If you lost a loved one, and I came over and I said, Mr. Schroyer, I'm really sorry for your loss. That's not an apology. I would say it is. Basically, what he said, the statement he made, fact checkers on this have said cannot be accurate. Who are the fact checkers? I'm not sure. I'm looking over this right now. It may have been that text may have been in the story, that phrase fact checkers. Really? But, um, Mr. Troy, we got time. <clears throat> the article's not long. If you want to read it and find out, I'm happy for you, or I can point you to where I think you want to look. Okay, would you? Yeah, if you look at page two, would you put this up, Melissa? This is a PX20. Is your water filter empty? Yes. Ms. Magic Steel, can you bring another water pitcher out, please? Defense table. Page two, Melissa. Take this one if you'd like. This one's full. Let my staff handle it. You see at the bottom of page two of the story, it says Jim Fetzer, professor emeritus at the University of Minnesota, who wrote a book claiming senior book was staged, and goes on to kind of skew whatever that is. That's the fact checker, right? Um, that's most likely what I was referring to, yes. Okay. He was fired from Minnesota for his stuff on Sandy Hook, wasn't he? You know that? Um, I did not know that at the time. Um, I do understand that he no longer is employed at that university. The book, Sandy Hook, what this, I'm sorry. This book's not called Sandy Hook Stage, it's called Nobody Died in Sandy Hook. You know that, right? No, I'm unfamiliar. Was it on, wasn't it on the InfoWars website as a PDF? I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. So, oh, Orient. Okay. Orient the jury, this is June 25th, 2017, we ran the court, right? Yes. Okay. Lisa, can you put up uh, PF 73? Well, you, know, you know who Paul Watson is, right? 
Yes. Remember what his title was in 2015 or 2016? What do you mean by title? What was his job? He worked for InfoWars. What, what was his job? I believe he was the editor in chief. Okay. Let's see what he says in an email on December 17, 2015. So about six months before you run that story. I'm going to read this along and see if I read it right. This Sandy book stuff is killing us. It's promoted by the most batshit crazy people like Ritz and Fetzer, who all hate us anyway. Plus, it makes us look really bad to a line of people who harass the parents of dead kids. It's going to hurt us with Drudge and bringing bigger names into the show. Plus, the event happened three years ago. Why even risk our reputation for it? I read that right? Yes. And you see a copy there that said, send this to Alex. Right? Yes. You understand that to mean this is the message he sent to Alex, and he's now sending it to Buckley, uh, Anthony, and Anthony at InfoWars, right? Yes. Six months before you ran your story, InfoWars knew that Fetzer was not a well man, right? I'm uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Six months before you ran your story, who the fact checker in the story was Fetzer, six months before you did that, InfoWars knew that he was not a well man, right? Your Honor. <clears throat> Oh, I looked at it wrong, my bad. So, I'm sorry. Uh, a year and a half, my, my fault, not six months. A year and a half before, a year and a half before you ran your story, <coughs> InfoWars knew that Spencer was not well, right? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, clearly, via this email, Paul Joseph Watson did not trust Spencer and called him batshit crazy. And there was a there was an email that went out that said, stop this, let's stop for this interview stuff, right? Yes. But you didn't. Right. I never saw this email. I didn't say you saw this email. You clearly saw the one that said stop or the San Diego stuff, right? No, I just told you I've never seen this email. Not this email. Was there a message, email, smoke signal, memo, whatever it may be, that said stop it at InfoWars with the San Diego stuff? Uh, I believe those memos may have gone around. I don't exactly recall, though. That didn't happen, though. There was more videos, and then there was yours. It's 2017, right? Yes. Can you play the Carver video? So before you play it, this is the clip from Dr. Carver, the, the medical examiner. And, and you can hear his answer well. I'm going to turn this as loud as I can. I want you to try to hear the question that he's answering. Okay? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever considered it? Oh, I'm not sure. You don't know if you've ever heard the question that he's actually answering? I'm not, I, I don't recall. It's not for me. I mean, it is for so me, but it's for the record, too. Right. So this is your so video, plaintiff's video 23. Yes, PBX, PBX 23. And it's loud. It's already prepared. Turn, turn it down right after the question. We may have to listen to it a few times. I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to tell you what the question is, and then you can just, it, it'll help you hear it when you actually know what it is. The question is, what shape were the bodies in when the families were brought forward to identify them. Okay? Uh, we did not bring the bodies and the families into contact. We took uh, pictures of them, um, of, of their facial features. You have, uh, uh, it's, it's easier on the families when you do that. Uh, there is uh, a time and a place for up close and personal in the grieving process, but to accomplish this, uh, we felt it would be best uh, to do it this way, and uh, you can sort of, uh, you can control the situation uh, depending on your photographer, and I have very good photographers, uh, but... Uh, Sound like the question that I said? Uh, it sounded like it. Okay, it's close. It's something about how were these children's bodies, what condition were they in when the poor family had to come identify? That was the question being asked, right? It's tough to hear, but it's something like that. All right. Do you think the state of Connecticut just somehow wouldn't allow parents to ever be reunited with their kids after they were murdered? Is that a real thought you have? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. You think that's possible? 
what's possible. That the state of Connecticut just wouldn't give the bodies of, of murdered children back to their parents for the mourning and grieving process? I'm not sure the process of uh, coroners receiving and retrieving dead bodies and the process of that getting released, all I had was that clip. And in the clip, what Dr. Carver says is to accomplish this. What is the this he's talking about? I'm not sure. It's the identification of the kids and matching them up with the parents, right? Okay. Do you think it would be wise to have a board full of 20 dead first graders and bring parents in and say, go find your child? Or is it a little bit better practice to have photographs and try to do it that way? I have no idea. I've never worked with a coroner. I don't know that process. Which one makes more sense, Mr. Schroyer? Again, I don't know. Maybe it's harder to identify with a picture. Maybe it's harder to identify a body. You're asking me a line of work I have zero experience in. You never listened to the whole video, the whole interview with Dr. Carver, right? I don't believe so. Um, if you look at tab six in your book. Tab six? Yes, sir. Or oh, you may not have it. Uh, I, my book goes up to four. I'm not going to introduce this. I'm going to just show it to you. To oh, see. I'm worried about something. I have the whole video, and I don't think we need to listen to it. But what I did is just a screenshot it and blew up the uh, little stamp at the end. It shows 1528. You see that? Yes. Does that also show you that this the whole video is 15 minutes and 28 seconds? I'll trust your word for it. All right. Can I just screw up as a demonstrator? Any objection? No objection. Okay. Yeah, so twenty five. You edited out what? In your piece, there was a part edited out of what? Maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds? Something around there, yes. You can take it down with some. That was available, right? You could have went and found that video, figured out what, what was being discussed, right? You mean? That when do you mean? When you hear it? No. You don't think that video is available when you hear it? it available. Might, it might have been available. But I'm saying I never had access to it, and I had four minutes left until break, and that was all the videos I had. Four minutes left until the, <coughs> the ion, metal ion, whatever it feels? Yeah, the break. Right. The commercial. The infomercial. The commercial break, yeah. Right. Infomercial break. Testified that, that this was available. It was on, it was, you could have found it if you went looking for it, right? You're not disputing that. The full um, interview of the coroner was available. Okay. You're agreeing with me, right? Well, again, I, I don't know that, but I'm, I'm taking your word for it. Okay. Well, if you could, look at your deposition on page 110, line 14. question that you're asked is, because available was the whole coroner's press conference. True, what's your answer? Where is this? Uh, 110, line 14, through 16. I'll read my question again. Because available was the whole coroner's press conference. True? My answer was, not to me, but it was out there. It was available if somebody just looked, right? Oh, uh, yes. Your whole story. This whole story is wrong because you didn't know the clip from the interview with the coroner was edited. That's fair, right? Yeah, the zero head story, I had that clipped out. Let me ask you that question again, and I'm not responsible. Sustained. The whole story you ran, the free speech system put out on the air to however many people would watch it, and then probably loaded it up somewhere. That whole story was wrong because you did not know the clip from the interview of the coroner was edited, right? I don't understand the question, I'm sorry. <coughs> what you aired is wrong. It's wrong, right? It's not a correct statement. The whole piece is wrong. Can you be more specific for me? 
yeah, that this timeline of events and fact checkers is all wrong, not true, factually inaccurate. Fair? Yeah, I'd say that it's my recollection that the timeline presented in that story was inaccurate now. And the story was wrong because you didn't know that that interview with the coroner was edited, right? Correct. Okay. You were just, like you said a second ago, too much of a, too, in too much of a hurry to get that on the air, to do that, right? No, it wasn't a hurry. It was just a new story was brought to me, and I covered it. And in the process, hurt real people. You understand that now, right? I, I feel awful for grieving parents from that horrific event. That is not what I asked you. In the process of hurrying up and putting that story out to a, a worldwide broadcast, you hurt real people. Do you understand that sitting here right now today? I'm sorry if that hurt anybody. And it's hard for me to accept that as we're continuing to talk about it for me to say, understand this hurts someone, but yet we just keep talking about it, so we're just going to keep hurting people. You think they shouldn't exercise their rights to the court system, because that might hurt them, just let you off. That's what you think? No, I never said that. Continues, and I hope that their grieving can end sometime. If you were if in there, didn't you? Well, I would imagine going through this process has to still hurt. You signed an affidavit in this case. Do you remember that? Yes. Can you pull up kids, sports camp, and before you do, Your Honor, I believe it is an evidence that. I want to confirm. I couldn't <coughs> the number. PX 14, sorry. 14 is in evidence. It's tab 2 in your book. We see we'll pull up to the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You asked me about y'all's number and system. Not a video. Let me double check. I looked at the wrong thing. Okay, 14 is in evidence. Yes. <coughs> Got it. If you look a couple pages in where your signature line is, says sworn to yes. well, let me just ask you an easier way you know when you do an affidavit that's sworn testimony right yes okay under penalty for right I want to look at paragraph 10 please the page one page four you're discussing the broadcast and what you did. And you say, I then played the referenced unaltered widely distributed video clip of a news conference with the medical examiner cited in which he told reporters that parents were not given access to their children. Unaltered? Yes. That is inaccurate. No, there's right? nothing altered about that clip. I just showed you the clip's 15 minutes and change, right? That's a different clip. Okay. What you're saying is you just you just took whatever zero point now did and did whatever he wanted to do, right? I'm saying that the clip that you played at the corner was not altered. It may have been cut out of a larger clip, but that clip itself was not altered. At least I'm not aware of it. If I take a clip and take a piece out of it. Haven't I altered the clip? No, you just right. made a new clip. Okay, so by unaltered, what you mean is you didn't like dub over it or something like that? Yes. Okay. All right. Take that down with I want to play one more, well, actually, a couple more parts from PBX 23. 23. Um, we're going to play that McDonald family clip, if you would. 
going to be you know, hard not to have been able to actually see her. Well, at first I thought that, and I had questioned maybe wanting to see her. Early on, I asked you the question, it is not right to edit a clip to fit an agenda. You agree, right? Yes. You know that clip was edited to fit an agenda, right? Not at the time. I didn't ask you about it at the time. Today, I still don't know that. You don't? Okay. You've never seen the full transcript? No. Okay. Plaintiff's Exhibit 19 is under tab 3. This is the transcript of the whole article with um, Anderson. You know, are we at, uh, move Plaintiff's Exhibit 19 and Any objection? Authentication, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, go to the CNN, the CNN website. Um, we're obviously not offering the truth of the matter, sir. Obviously, but, um, we're just showing him that he edited a clip. Right. So he he has objections authentic authentication, not hearsay. Okay. So do you have something to show me where it came from? I don't believe we'll it with our expert. Okay. Your Honor, can I read the rest of that answer? Or I have to read the rest of the answer to that question now. The, who read the rest of the answer to what question? I'm sorry, the, uh, Ms. McDonald's answer that was cut off in the clip that he played, we have the rest of the answer. Do you have the video? You only have a transcript. We were unable to ever find the video. And, okay, and you got the transcript from the CNN website? Our expert, our expert did. Okay. We need to wait for him. I think we might need to wait for the expert and then bring it back up. Mr. Schroyer, have you seen the full video? No, ma'am. Do you, Mr. Schroyer, understand that what she was saying about seeing her child was in the funeral home? That the McDonald family, what they did is they brought racist things that she loved, seashells. Um, they brought sunglasses. They brought a Taylor Swift album on Christmas album that she loved, a frying pan that she loved to cook. And they were going to put it in the casket with Grace. But they didn't, because they didn't want to see her body like that, so they gave it to the funeral director. To do. You understand that's what she's saying right there? I was unaware of that. That would be an important thing to know, right? Before you run a piece like that? Yes. Obviously she saw her child, right? I, I don't know. Obviously she was allowed, that's a bad question. Obviously she was allowed to see her child, right? I don't know. It is your position that you do not know, as a as a general proposition, whether or not parents of murdered children are ever allowed to see the child's body. I'd have to make an assumption, but I mean, I would assume yes. Right. Can you play the ending clip? The ending clip. One more clip from PDX twenty three. Okay, so just another question that people are now going to be asking about Sandy Hook, the conspiracy theorists on the internet out there that have a lot of questions that are yet to get answered. I mean, you can say whatever you want about the event. That's just a fact. So there's another one. Will there be a clarification from Heslin or Megyn Kelly? I wouldn't hold your breath. <laughs> so now they're fueling the conspiracy theory claims. Unbelievable. We'll be right back with more. He doesn't. Why in the world would Megan Kelly owe you an explanation? She doesn't. What about any of that was funny? As I explained earlier, if Megan's if Megan Kelly's goal was to stymie conspiracy theories about Sandy Hook being a hoax, it did the exact opposite of its effect. You know, I don't find funny. Sandy Hook funny. I don't find the tragic loss of life funny at all. Do you think? Do you think that prolonged? An increased grief around a, a, a murdered child or something? Because that's oh. what happened, right? You understand? That's what happened. You prolonged and you compounded grief. You understand that? By covering an interview with Megan Kelly? 
by saying Neil Hesla never held Jesse after the murder at Sandy Hook Elementary School. I never That's said that. that. Scarlett and you observe better than what you did that day? Yes. 2016 is when you started at Infowars or Free Speech Systems. Um, you knew and know that really the only people that were spreading this lie about Sandy Hook was you and the Wolfgang Hollow, right? Before the question is, why were there so? Why were they so important to you in this video? You mentioned them twice, and you answer. I think it was more a matter of, from my perspective, Alex Jones was catching all this flack for Sandy Hook, but the other people that were questioning it weren't. To my best knowledge, the question, well, what do you mean by other people? Answer, Wolfgang Caldick. Question, anyone else? Answer, not that I'm aware of. That's what you said under oath, what, are you, eight months ago, right? Yes. Have you learned something different now? Can you rephrase that? Have you learned something different? I mean, the people spreading the lies about Sandy Hook was Alex Jones and Wolfgang Holland. Those are the two main people, right? Well, I guess Zero Hedge as well. With his three shares? Well, that was at the time. I don't know how many times it's been shared now. So, I just want, I want to make, make sure you got, what is it, zero point? Or zero, or zero Hedge, what's one? The author? I, I, I said zero, zero Hedge. Zero Hedge, okay. Wolfgang Halbig and Alex Jones and Infowars, right? Right one. Is that, those are the folks that were spreading lies about Sandy Hook. I feel like you're asking you a separate question. Speculation. I, I, you, let me go back to the deposition. I'll ask you a different question. You say in your deposition on page 191 that the other people catching flack about Sandy Hook was Wolfgang Halbeck and you're not aware of anyone else, correct? That's what you said under oath. No, I said Alex Jones. Alex Jones and Wolfgang Halbeck, those are the two, right? Those are the two names mentioned in my deposition, yes. And, and it wasn't like we just moved on. There was another question that said, anyone else? And you said, not that I'm aware of, right? Yes. Okay. But today you want to say zero heads, we'll throw them in the mix. Zero head, <laughs> zero point now, and I guess I've been point two. All right. You would agree with me that to spread, whether it be the truth or a lie, you have to have a way to reach the audience, right? Okay, yes. A platform, if you will. Yes. Wolfgang Halbert, InfoWars was his voice. Oh, you were his megaphone, right? No. He didn't have a TV show, right? You don't need a TV show to have a voice. Well, I'm going to go through some other items, too. So I'll ask that question again. He doesn't have a TV show, right? Not that I'm aware of. He doesn't have a radio show, right? Not that I'm aware of. He doesn't have some big internet presence, right? I don't know. He doesn't have any way to get his brand of crazy out other, through, other than through InfoWars, right? That's who he used, right? I don't know. Let's play... PBX 15G. You have no reason to be doing this to be going public. I mean, I would imagine you've lost a lot of business. And you tell that to my wife, I am about to be kicked out of my own house after being married 39 years. Alex, I'm about to lose my family because I'm simply asking the questions that you and your stations are looking at. And I'm asking you right now, and I'm asking all your listeners, don't go there. Support InfoWars. Become part of the Warriors. We need uh, We need this show. We need the truth. Uh, if you find it in your heart to donate a few dollars to our legal funds, let me tell you, we have them. We have the lawsuits filed. We are closed, but we can't do it without people helping me. I'm too old for this. 
but I do need help. The big thing is support in full force, because if we don't have your voice, nobody's going to hear the truth. Well, folks, you donate, and, and briefly, because we're going to break, tell us the specifics of where it was filed, what's going on with the lawsuit. Well, it's filed here in Seminole County because all of my businesses, Children's Safety Institute, the National Institute, this is my home, this is where I live. And so instead of going to Connecticut where everything is crooked, we're going to come in the back door, and therefore we file it. It's in the Seminole County court system. The judge, I mean the female judge, she saw what we're talking about, and she did not hesitate issuing those 10 subpoenas across the country. And they've been served, and we're not just waiting for all of the responses. Wow, well, this is big national news. Did you hear Mr. Halbig say, if we don't have your voice, nobody's going to hear the truth? I don't remember everything he said, but I believe something along those lines was said yesterday. You trust me that that's close enough, right? And that's, that was the message he just said. Rather than play it again, I'll trust you. Fair enough. The your in your voice is InfoWars or Alex Jones, right? Uh, or, or, or the audience, yeah. The audience. We're going to play it again, and I'm going to stop it right after he says it, so I'm supposed to do it all. Okay? okay. Let's make sure. <laughs> You have no reason to be doing this to be going public. I mean, I would imagine you've lost a lot of business. And you tell that to my wife. I am about to be kicked out of my own house after being married 39 years. Alex, I'm about to lose my family because I'm simply asking the questions that you and your stations are looking at. And I'm asking you right now, and I'm asking all your listeners, don't go there. Support InfoWars. Become part of the Warriors. We need, uh, we need this show. We need the truth. Uh, if you find it in your heart to donate a few dollars to our legal funds, let me tell you, we have them. We have the lawsuits filed. We are closed, but we can't do it without people helping me. I'm too old for this, but I do need help. The big thing is support InfoWars, because if we don't have your voice, nobody's going to hear the truth. Support InfoWars, because if we don't have your voice, nobody's going to hear the truth. Mr. Halbig knows he needs InfoWars to get his message out, right? I don't know that. That's what he just said. Not necessarily. Tell me what other interpretation that we all just heard of we need InfoWars if we don't have, I mean, right, say it perfectly, if we don't have your voice, nobody's going to hear the truth. What other interpretation is it that he needs InfoWars to get his message out? He addressed before that he said, I said something along the lines of, I need your listeners, or I need all your listeners. So that could be viewed as, we're all in this together. We need your voice, like you out there in the audience. Support InfoWars. This is right before it, right? Support InfoWars. We don't have your voice, nobody's going to hear the truth. Right? Yeah. Support InfoWars by giving money, right? Uh, yeah, and I think he mentioned a legal fund campaign, too. Yeah, so, because in addition to selling supplements, I mean, that's what he's saying support InfoWars, he's not saying go buy the supplements. He's saying just give you money, right? No. You have a donate button. Just donate money, right? We do have a donate button, yeah, but I don't think he mentioned that. I didn't hear that. Right, and, and sometimes you have almost telebox where it's just, just, just give me money. If you want to hear the truth, if you hear the truth, just give us money. Give us some more money, right? Yeah, everybody does that. PBS, everybody does that. Is that this PBS so brain force? What is it, brain force to No, they just take our money. Yeah. Without the, without the brain force to bills? That, I'm, that's the pill, right? Uh, brain force plus is a pill. Yes. Brain force plus. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, PBS doesn't have to sell anything to get funding. They just get it for free. You know, PBS is a nonprofit, right? Nonprofit? Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you not know that? Well, it might be a nonprofit, but people are getting paid. Yeah, that's how nonprofits work. Mr. Troy, I don't have more questions for you. All right, Mr. Reno.
Mr. Scherrier, um, please tell the members of the jury where you're from originally. I am originally from St. Louis, Missouri. And um, did you go to college? I did go to college. And what did you get your degree in? I studied psychology and media studies. What, um, how did you first get involved with broadcast? In high school, when I wasn't starting on the varsity teams, I realized I was not going to be a professional <coughs> athlete, so I began writing for our school newspaper and doing reporting from our high school sporting events. While you were, after you graduated from high school, while you were in college, did you continue to work in broadcast? I did. When I was at college, I was actually working professionally at multiple radio stations in St. Louis, and I was also the editor-in-chief of our student newspaper called The Current. And uh, what type of reporting were you doing? For The Current, I was reporting on everything because we were very understaffed. So movies, concerts, sports, uh, just general activities on campus. And then professionally, I was in the sports media covering <coughs> local sports in St. Louis, college, professional. Uh, was this on the radio? Yes. And about how much time would you spend on the radio talking about sports? At one point in time, I was producing, I believe, four shows a day, weekdays. And I was not the host, um, but I would engage in commentary with the show hosts that I was producing for at that time. So we're talking maybe 10 to 12 hours. And um, did you, uh, did there come a time when you became interested in covering things beyond just sports? Yeah, I believe it was about 2013 when I wanted to pivot from sports to current events and politics. And if you recall, what was there an event, something that happened that, that made you want to switch from sports to current events in politics? There was. It was the Boston Marathon bombing. It was the first time in my life that I ever watched a news broadcast at all. I was not really watching television news, but I had the same fervor for being accurate talking on the radio back then. So I started to watch news reports on the Boston Marathon bombing, and I started to follow up on some of those, do some digging. And what I realized was that we're not getting a full story from our government or our mainstream media. And it was kind of a shocking experience for me that really just changed my career path. How did you go about making the transition from, and let me back up. What was it about the coverage of the Boston Marathon bombing that so stuck out to you and made you want to look into it more? Well, for one, the FBI put up the Sarnia brothers' mugshots, and they were looking for information on them. But they claimed at the time they didn't know who they were, and it later came out that the older Sarnia brother was actually a government asset and had been flying back and forth from the United States to parts of the Middle East. So they knew well, they were well aware of who he was, and they didn't tell us that. And then when I saw the lockdown that they had, I don't know if lockdown is the right word, but basically they were going door to door looking for them, and then somehow he's in a boat covered in blood and they didn't find him. So I didn't really know what I was getting into at the time. I just had more interest in that in that moment than I did sports for the first time in my life. And how did you how did you go about making the transition from being a sports only radio person to being somebody who covered politics and current events? I was extremely embedded in the sports industry in St. Louis, so it really wasn't even a transition. I continued to work all the jobs that I had in sports, but I started doing some political stuff on the side, doing some YouTube live videos, starting to interject some political stuff on the radio shows. Um, so it was really just more of an add-on top than it was a transition at the time. Your, uh, 
the when you were fine when you got a radio show that allowed you to talk about politics and current events, um, how old? I think I was twenty three at the time. And really, most of my political coverage at that time was on YouTube, because anybody could start a YouTube account and fire up a live stream and have an audience. And from what time to what time did it broadcast? There was no uh, frequency of time. It was really just a matter of if I had a free hour or so. That was a poor question. When you finally got a radio show and said you was talking about politics and current events, what time was it aired? Nine to midnight. And um, were you paid to do that? No. How did you get the radio station to put you on from nine to midnight? Well, I won a civil suit against the radio station because they owed me thousands of dollars. And the GM at the time offered me a time slot on the radio in exchange for not me not being paid the funds. I knew I was going to get paid. I wanted the airtime, so that was the deal that was made. All right, it's 5 o'clock, so we're going to break for the day. For my jury, please remember and follow all of the instructions I've given you so far, and we'll see you tomorrow at 8.45 so that we can start right at 9. Thank you so much.